Ah, the people are calling Rona Graf. Now she. Ooh, that's <laughs> a good one. What, what, what is that's that reaction for? That's so. So for folks who may not know. Uh, really, the, the, there's a handful of people. Trump Organization is a very, very small thing. We learned about this in our investigation at Trump University, and I talk about it a little bit in the book, but I don't talk about Rona. The inner circle for Trump is very, very small. And it's really, at the time of a lot of this happening, it consisted of Michael Cohen, Alan Weisselberg, Rona Graff, uh, only, a, only a few other people really in his inner inner circle for Trump org sitting at Trump Tower. Rowan has been his assistant for decades. Since 1987. Yeah. Yeah. And she has been described as the gatekeeper, yes. as his right hand. She even appeared on some episodes of The Apprentice. Yes. She got, in fact, a little bit of, of um, I guess, you know, um, name recognition because people would actually call Trump Tower looking for her. Tim O'Brien, what can you tell us about Rona Graf? Um, I mean, there's much more here than simply Rona Graf was in the inner circle of, with Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump doesn't use email, and all email that was sent into the Trump Organization was screened by Rona Graf. Rona Graf's hard drive at the Trump Organization is a gold mine of information about the comings and goings on a daily basis of the Trump Organization. Uh, you know, so they've always famously said Donald Trump doesn't leave a paper trail behind himself, which makes it difficult for prosecutors to keep up with what he was doing. The reality is there's a massive paper trail surrounding Rona Graf. And uh, perhaps the Manhattan DA already uh, subpoenaed her hard drive and has looked through it. Um, but, it, you know, she is the sort of communication equivalent of Alan Weisselberg, mm -hmm. who is the financial crypt keeper at the Trump Organization. And she's a very material witness, and I imagine there's very hard documentation behind any uh, fact pattern they may want to allege when they question her. I know you have to go, Tim, but I have to ask you this last question. If there was one question you think goes to the heart of her knowledge, what might it be? Uh, how often did Mr. Trump uh, communicate with other women who are not his wife? How often did he discuss paying them to stay quiet? And how often in any of the email that you had in your possession did he discuss its impact on his prospects as a presidential candidate in 2016? Tim O'Brien, uh, your knowledge of Donald Trump is vast and so useful today. Thank you so much for taking the time Thank to talk you. to us. I'm going to go back to you guys. So here is someone, the keeper of the information. It is famous. In fact, uh, Maggie Haberman, um, who follows Donald Trump and closely and knows him, said really only in the past couple of months, I think, he started to text. He does not email Again, this whole idea of a paper trail, there is almost no paper trail, right, that they can't come up with that Rona Graf would have had. Well, she is sort of the personification of the paper that's, trail. That's exactly what I was going to say. Rona Graf is, like. Rona Graf <laughs> is, is the, the paper trail. She is the personification. She is a human yes. paper trail for Donald Trump. Yes. And yeah. you, you heard from David Pecker, there was no formal agreement with the former president. Again, I say that the, the Donald Trump at the time, not president. She is that person. She puts people in the Oval Office, potentially. She puts people... Uh, in private meetings, she's she is that that paper trail, the personification. Absolutely. And the last part of what Tim said is he really I said, what, what's the one question? And he gave us three. One was about how many women maybe that there was communication about how many did you know they want to keep quiet. But the last part is related to the prospect of the campaign. And that really is the heart of this. Th right. Th that is. And, and some of that may not be admissible. How many other women there's issues about Painting that and theory. do they need but it really? The, the, the prosecution wants to keep this tight. Four corners of that indictment, four corners of that courtroom. Th let's just do what we have to do. But she's going to be a, a gatekeeper and she's going to show the path in part. Uh, now that we have Weisselberg, uh, pardon me, uh, David Pecker, who set that, that groundwork and that framework. She'll be the corroborator. Susan Hoffinger is going to lead the direct examination. She is the chief of the investigation uh, division and she is a woman. What do you make of that? Do, you, do, we, do either of you know uh, her or of her? I, I do know her. Um, so she was a prosecutor, then a criminal defense attorney, and now a prosecutor again. Uh, she, is, she is well equipped to handle this. The fact that she's a woman, I, I don't know if we should read Doesn't it matter. too much. No, it, you know, you, sometimes a, a more so on the defense, 
uh, you want a, a woman or a man, depending on what the allegations are. But I don't think that's here. This is a merit-based thing. Uh, you know, again, Josh Steinglass, Chris Conroy, you have the top shelf attorneys at the DA's office handling this case. One of the things I have to tell you, and this is breaking news, is that she says she is testifying today pursuant to a subpoena. When we were talking to a lot of lawyers going into this, they considered her to be not a likely witness. What kind of witness is she going to be here pursuant to a subpoena? Yeah, I mean, you know, people think of sort of the term of being a hostile witness. You probably have more to say about this than I do. But I think that she's, yeah, I think that we could see some interesting information out of her. But is she, she clearly isn't here going to, uh, she isn't here in a way to bend over backwards to help the prosecution. Let's put it that way. I think it's going to be, uh, you're going to only be wanting to ask her questions to which you already know the answers based on the things. Isn't that, that true? As a lawyer, you never ask a general, question you don't know the answer to in or general, not here, maybe? In general, but it's not on a direct. You usually want to ask an open ended question and let the witness go. I would not expect to see that here as much. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I agree. And, and, and keep in mind, you know, when someone is subpoenaed, you're not subpoenaed to an office. So she's subpoenaed right. to the trial. She's subpoenaed to the court. They likely have spoken little, if any, with her before. She hasn't been prepped as you would a witness. So it's almost as if she is a defense witness. But you can't direct her unless the judge ultimately says she's hostile. You can't ask leading right. questions. You still have to ask those open-end questions. It's a very difficult place to be in for the other side if you're dealing with that witness. But here for the prosecution, they can't lead her down that path. They can't give her sort of the answer before she answers. Right.